Hey guys, I'm back again. Um, if I'm gonna, if you hear me that I'm actually talking a little bit low, because um, it's pretty late and everybody's uh, probably asleep right now, so I'm gonna talk just a little low, and uh, I'm gonna do some tutorials with you. But I want to show you that I finally got an awesome phone holder that actually holds the phone, so I'll be able to do better filming, and it's sort of like a standing stick thing you just and you can actually bring it up all the way to the level that you want and then i got this one i actually ordered two of them i ordered uh, this one is for when i want to you know put it on a, a shelf or something or you know just crank it kind of you like crank it on a on a tabletop or something or an upper shelf and this is where i put the the camera so I'll be doing better, better films um, and better videos. So you'll be seeing a lot of stuff. And I'm going to start um, doing better angles, when, especially when I show my books. So anyway, let's get started. I want to show you some great books. And I'm going to show you some stuff that I've um, been learning from, like going back to Andrew Loomis. And then at the same time, um, I did a lot of uh, research and you know, reviewing his videos again by Abdon J. Romero and stuff. This is a book I ordered really cheap. Um, it was like $4. So, Drawing Portraits. Um, this shows you... Let me turn on the light. So, oh, wait, hold on a second. Give me a minute. Okay, so first let me uh, fix the, um, put the camera in place here, so we'll be able to do better, better view here. So now that I got this, it should be work, it should work really good now. So no problem at all, and plus it's, it stays still, and I'll be showing you pretty much a better view now. So I just got to tilt a little bit my board, my drawing board. And uh, first we'll start with this book. There's like several books I want to show you guys. This book and um, this is more like for a children's book, but it's good. because The methods are pretty good. So I'll leave that for last. But since I'm always, you know, I like doing faces. So I'm going to show you. This is the first book I got like way, way back. So let's start with this book first. This book, um, it's by uh, Mark and Mary Whit Willenbrink. And uh, it actually shows you pretty much about portrait drawing and, you know, the beginning process. There are some, you know, sketches that I did in the book, but very lightly with pencil. But I promised myself I would never draw my, on my books again. So, and I got this like way, way back when I started practicing drawing and stuff. So, you know, the basic stuff and, uh, you, you know, erasers, pencils, basics, you know, elements and things that you need, tools pictures using a mirror also is good and an actual board see the board that i have is something like this it's one of these uh, art boards that you could get in the art store because unfortunately i don't have a a drafting table so maybe in the future i'll probably get one and uh it tells you pretty much how to sit down and you know when you're doing reference and drawing the person and how to you know Handle the pencil and making pencil marks, pencil grips and strokes. There's a scribbling, cross hatching, graduation, gradation. I forgot. Yeah, I pronounced it wrong. And uh, these are all types of pencil marks that you know people need to know how to handle the pencil and how to do it, how to actually do all types of toning and stuff. So here we have the the head making the structure sketch step by step. Again, this book provides a lot of information in drawing, um, you know, heads and faces and stuff like that. So here's uh, stuff when you're doing an ink and black and white ink. And uh, pencil techniques, understanding values.
And here we have the light and uh, light effects when you're doing light effects. That's me. I did that, you know, sketching the head. So, you know, it actually shows you pretty much. And um, Andrew Loomis actually shows you things like this. This is pretty cool. I like the way he did this. It's a step-by-step -step process how to draw heads. This is me, I actually highlight, highlighted it with the yellow ink. Actually, yellow marker. And we got the front view, the profile. This is uh, the process in doing the profile. This is uh, pretty uh, easy. You start with a regular fear circle, and then you start doing the lines, the grid lines for the eyes, nose, mouth. It's a little bit dirty. Like I said, this book is pretty old. I had it for a very long time. Like I think it was like maybe 20 years I had this book. This is also a three quarter view right here. Step by step, it tells you pretty much all the instructions you need to do. The basic elements of the, the eyes, nose, mouth. Front view, three quarter view and front view. Sorry, uh, profile. The elderly proportions. That's also elderly proportion, but for a female. Child proportions. Let me lower down the, the light a little bit there. And just focus this just a little bit. There you go. Then we got uh, more faces here, different expressions, facial expressions. Relaxed, happy, sad, shocked, angry, doubtful, worried, smiling. This is pretty neat, the way he did the eye, an angry look with the eye. It looks almost realistic. These are also eyes over here, different, uh, very, very realistic. That's me, I actually drew, you know, trying to practice way, way, way back and doing eyes. You know, the segments, step by step, how to do the eyes. And when I say segments, it's sort of like step by step, you know, the process and building anything, you know, the face, the eyes, mouth and everything. This is pretty cool here, different noses, different styles of noses, that's important. And this is the elements, you know, the step-by-step -step process and how to do the nose. And we got the lips, the mouths. This is another way of doing the lips right here, the mouth. The ears, and I need a lot of practice doing ears. And as you can see, I was practicing up here too. But yeah, I draw my, uh, I don't do, you know, scribbling or anything like that or mess up my books. What I do, I just do small sketches, but I'm, I'm going to stop that. Like, I'm not going to do, half of my books are, are like kind of like drawn on, but I don't do it anymore. And then uh, we got the ears right here, how to do the ears step by step. And we got the hair, how to do the hair. So this is a very good book. Especially if you want to, you know, draw classical style, draw the faces and heads, classical style. So it might work out for you guys. So, and um, how to draw the hair right here. The process of doing the hair. It's really cool. How to draw all types of costumes, accessories, all kinds of stuff, helmets, you know. How to draw the hat. 
baseball hat, how to draw the baseball hat, how to draw the glasses, process, step by step, how to draw the glasses, sunglasses. So it gives you like an, an idea, especially when you're, when the glasses are too dark and you can see the reflection of the other side of the person. The reflection, you know, that he's actually looking at, you'll see the reflection right there. That's pretty neat. So it's giving you an idea how to do glasses and how to do sunglasses, shades, diversity. And this is very important when you're drawing uh, portrait drawing and people. You need to learn how to draw, you know, faces in different races. You have the, um, the African, you have the Asian, and you have the Hispanic. Um, but not all Hispanics look like that. They're all types of Hispanics. Hispanics comes in different races, and trust me, in different colors and different races from all different countries. That's more like a Hispanic guy. And this is a, how do you call it, more like a, a Hindu person, I'm not really sure. The more like Nordic looking people. So it's giving you a different, you know, idea how to draw different people, different races and stuff. This is the process how to do this uh, Asian woman right there with the glasses, step by step part of the process. I think this is um, pretty easy, um, the process in doing this. It's sort of like the Loomis technique, except that you're actually starting out with um, the segments first, the size of the head, then you build it into an oval. And then um, after that, you start indicating the eyes, the nose, the mouth. And then you start doing the vertical line. And, and then little by little, you start build, building the features until it takes place. Give me a minute, guys, for a second. My nose is so stuffed up. Looks like I'm coming down with some type of cold, but it's not as bad like there are days with, because we're in the summer, so. All right, so um, let's keep um, looking at the book because there's a lot to see with this book. Um, then you start finishing all the details, which is really cool, step by step. So I'm going to go a little faster, so that way you get an idea how the book looks like. Because I want to show you the, the other books. I don't know if you can see that well because of the glare, the light. Let me see something. Maybe like this would be better, yeah, without the light. No, you can still see the glare. Oh, Lord, yeah. How to draw a baby, step-by-step -step process. A baby. That kind of reminds me of Marvin Gaye a little bit. The uh, soul singer, a little bit, looks like him. <clears throat> How to draw two people together, like a mother and a child. Step by step.
And some of these drawings are kind of like charcoal drawing. You can tell by the paper. Let me check something out. Yeah, something like, yeah, you start out with the, um, the middle proportions and then you start building the shape of the face. I do a small little boy on a phone. So that's it guys, um, this is a very good book. It's by um, Mary, Mark and Mary Willenbrink. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Willenbrink, sorry. Uh, Drawing Portraits for Absolute Beginner. A clear and easy guide to successful portrait drawing. So it's a pretty good book. I've, um, it might, might be on eBay. You could probably find it. I had this for almost like 20 years. It's a little, kind of wearing out a little bit at the edges. The books don't last too long, especially on the edges. I don't know why. Like over here, it's kind of a little messed up. But it's a pretty good book. Um, you could probably find it on eBay and you could try Amazon. So let's go with the next book. I'm going to actually put this outside. And uh, we're going to continue with, this is one of my favorite ones. And this one, I actually uh, subscribed to him on YouTube. And his name is Justin Mass, and actually his profile, um, his channel is called Art Mass Art, something like that. But you can look him up, Justin Mass, uh, his channel, or Google it, Justin Mass channel, and you'll see pretty much a lot of videos that he does, and he does remarkable work uh, drawing people and faces. And like I said before, my my thing is like drawing superhero faces and you know, mutants and um, Marvel, DC heads and all that stuff. But um, I kind of like the idea of learning portrait drawing too, you know. It's like it's always good to learn a little bit of everything. So that's a very beautiful drawing of a little girl. He did that so precisely, perfectly good. Um, the only thing about this book is that some of the illustrations, the step-by-step -step press uh, process, it's very light, and I'm going to show you what I mean as I turn the pages. Um, it's got a lot of information about toning, how to do the toning of the face. Oh, let's wait till that plane pass. Yeah, the planes, when they're close by, oh my lord, they make such a big, no big noise. And it's a good thing the dogs are not barking, that is amazing. So you have a face over here. This is the actual painting of the faces. This is the real uh, portrait right here in black and white and regular in the regular photo. And then at the same time, this is the portrait. Look how close he got to the original draw. Sorry, to the original portrait. Beautiful art. This guy can draw really good. Selecting your subjects. That's a beautiful drawing of a woman. And I need a lot of practice doing a lot of details. And hair is one of them. I can, you know, I can draw the face pretty well. You know, the toning, I've gotten really better with the toning and everything. But I still need to do all these little highlights on the face. And I still need a lot of practice with the hair. The hair is not easy to do. The hair is like a mission. This is actually the, f the portraits that he actually picked out. So he actually picked out one of these pictures and um, he drew it very beautifully made with color and with a lot of details. You can see a lot of details here. Beautifully made. I love the way he did the hair, the way the hair kind of balanced. And that's the thing I need to learn, you know, following the balance of the hair because the hair goes out so many directions. And I heard um, Abdul J. Romero, when he was explaining how to do hair, um, he says that sometimes the hair is not perfect. Sometimes they might fold in a different direction. 
And, the, and it's true what he says. The hair sometimes changes direction. So you really got to, you know, if you really want to draw portraits, um, you really got to focus on the hair a lot, on the different directions that the hair go. As you can see, this is a drawing, and you can see the directions of the hair. There's a lot of lines here. He did a lot of lines. You can tell there's, a, there's so many lines that he did here. And then over here, he did a lot of lines here, too, to do the hair. But these are just, like, regular sketches that he's done. That's the artist himself, Justin Mass. He actually did a self... That came out pretty well, a uh, self-portrait of himself. That's something that I could never do. I mean, I try to do something, but mostly, if I were to do a self-portrait of me, I, I would do it comic book style. So that, that came out really good, the way he did that. And then uh, here's a beautiful drawing he did, drawing the head and face. Look at the beautiful details of the hair right here. And this is what I mean when you're doing the hair. You really got to, you know, start from the root of the hair right here, where the hair starts right here. And then you just really flow it down, the rhythm of the hair. Because the hair, you know, when you look at the hair, it's got rhythm. It's got, a, you know, movement. And it goes in different directions. So you got to really go follow the hair. Now, if I were to do this, if I would do a, you know, a portrait of this lady, and of course I need a bigger picture to draw a real portrait. And, and it's true what Abner J. Romero says that when you draw portraits from small pictures, it's not easy. So it's better to get a bigger picture like this. See, I could practice with this and start working with the hair and do a lot of details with the hair and stuff. And it's always, remember, it's always important to start out with the skull. Give me a minute for a second, guys. I'm gonna turn on the air. Going back to the drawing, you know, you can see the skull. And you can tell he started sort of like a, sort of like a block shape. You can see kind of like the lines he did, the outline. There are so many ways of doing this. You can start with the block shape too. There was a interesting video that I saw by Abdon G. Romero. I don't know if I have it here. Let me see. I think um, because I made a, another book only with faces only everything on Abs and J Romero so so this is um, pretty much I have to like glue it all together and stuff so this is you start out with a block shape and then you start fill, you know filling out the features and all that but I'm going to be doing an, a separate video dedicated to him and Loomis um, so I'm going to actually do like a mix like Loomis and Romero at the same time so let's go on with the book. Uh, as you can see, here's the basic facial construction, you know, with the, here's the profile. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if you can see the lines. There's a, a vertical line. Let me bring it a little closer so you can see. <clears throat> you can see the um, vertical line right there and the horizontal line. Focus this a little better. Right here and the horizontal line. And it's sort of like a, a box shape right here, see? From here to here. And of course, the face has like three parts. And then when you do these three parts, of course, you have a line for the eye, a line for the mouth. This is more like, you know, the proportion and symmetry. Uh, symmetry. And, of course, the, the symmetry, I think it means that, you know, one part of the face is a little bit different from the other part. Like, over here, you see the eyebrow a little bit downward. This one is a little bit up. And the eye here is just opened up a little bit more, and this one is a little bit. So that's what, what he means by symmetry. You can see this eyebrow going down this way, and this eyebrow going up a little bit. So that's what I, that's what he means by symmetry. Let me um, move it like this so the glare won't mess it up. Let 
This is also interesting, this woman, the way he did this. This is more like for, I, I would say more like for cartooning this type of face. It's like he's giving you like three options in doing a, a regular front view. And this is most uh, like facial expressions of the same woman, of course. No, actually these are different women, but doing um, different uh, expressions. The eyes are very important to, because a lot of people don't know how to draw eyes. As you can see, there's sort of like a cylinder, sorry, a, a fear shape circle, an eyeball shape to do the eye. That's very important. And this is the uh, step by step, define the shapes of the eyes. You can start out with the circle and then you define the shapes. You know, you start refining the eye with, you know, the eye shapes. Here we have the nose. And you can tell there's a lot of planes on this nose, a lot of direction, see? A lot of planes, especially in the bottom of the nose, the nostril, it's got a lot of planes. And the form of the nose. And then you got the lips. You can form the lips in so many ways. How to do an open mouth and i need a lot of practice when i do open mouths that's uh that's a real mission doing open mouths but when you practice it a lot i mean some some of my drawings i can do open mouths but it's it's a lot of time i gotta do it takes a lot of time because you want to make sure you show a hint of the teeth but when you're doing comics um you gotta you know just do like a hint of a teeth like just a few lines for the teeth The ears. It's pretty cool. Some more portrait drawing. This is more like uh, tips for rendering the hair, the types of different styles of hair. Draw long hair, how to do long hair. Loose and block in and establish, establish the values, build up the form, create the highlights, brighten in the highlights, finish the drawing. Facial hairs, how to do a goatee. Move it this way so the glare won't show that much. I'm gonna have to like probably put the book this way instead of this way because of the glare. Skin tone is always important. You can tell the difference from here to here. This is the, the drawing of all this. This is the real pictures and this is the drawing. Hands and feet, that's also important. You can see he starts out with the, um, the segments, vertical line and the, the side of the face over here. You can see another line here, sort of like a box shape. My greatest guess is that he probably started out with the horizontal lines first and then he started doing the block technique with the vertical line. It probably says it right here. So I got to go back and read this to see how he did this. And you actually use the grid line in order to form a face too. Some people actually use the grid line. I never use the grid line, I don't know why. I'm so used to using circles and uh, ovals. But it's always good to try new things, you know. 
That's a beautiful picture of a woman, especially the drawing he did. This is the actual drawing he did, step by step. This is the, the regular photo, and this is the actual drawing that he did of the woman, step by step. And I love the way he did the highlights on the face. Came out really good. So we got over here two women here to, you know, reference photo. And he did, you know, he kind of like doodle the faces. And this is the actual finished drawing right here, step by step, the way he did it. Amazing. From this to this. So my greatest guess, I think he would probably start out with an oval. And then he indicates the lines for the eyes, the nose, the mouth. From this to this. From this to this. And then little by little, he starts refining the, the portrait more better and stuff. So that's amazing the way he did that. This one is pretty interesting because um, this one, like I, uh, I could actually, like I thought, he actually starts with horizontal lines to figure out the, you know, the, uh, the eye lines, the, the nose line, the mouth line, pretty much like uh, Abdon J. Romero does. Um, and then he, I think he would probably start, let me see, oh yeah, mark the vertical lines, which is probably the, the first vertical line, which would be the center of the face, and then the vertical lines for the eyes. But my greatest guess, let me see something, mark the vertical lines, um, take the reference to the top of the paper, at the same as step one, but with vertical lines, including the center of the face, sides, and the head, and the chin, and sides of the eyes. So yeah, I think um, what he does, which I'm gonna try this, see if it works. He starts out with a vertical line. No, actually, well, he starts with a horizontal line right here, you can see that. It's very, very light, it's horizontal horizontally right here see the top of the head the eyes the nose the mouth and the chin so then what he does is he starts he does the uh, center which is the vertical line vertical lines for the eyes and then vertical lines tapered in to form the whole head i think that's the way he did it so My greatest guess, um, he would do something like this. Uh, let's, let's try this out. So, he starts out pretty much with the horizontal line for the eyes. The nose line. Sort of like three parts. We're actually doing three parts, except that he's doing an eye line here. And then he does the mouth line right here, which he, d he did right here. You can't see it that much because he did this on charcoal, so... Um, it's very hard to see. If you want to really see it really good, you're going to have to buy the book and figure it out. So that's my greatest guess. He started doing that, and then after that, he did the vertical line, right? And then he started indicating where the eye levels are with tiny vertical lines like that. All the way straight down to the nose, where the nose level is because it's gonna be the corners of the nose all the way down to the chin. That's the way he did it, all the way to the, to, to the chin. And then I think he did another line in the center where the eye, that he placed the eye. So let's do this in ink, in ink so you guys can see it more clear. And where did I, I put my, um, my ruler? I know I had it here someplace, hold on a second. I have my ruler here someplace, so I gotta look for it. Whoa. Oh, I can't find it right now. Maybe I had it right here. Let me see. I gotta find my ruler. Oh, I just had it right here. I don't know what happened to it. Um, looks like I can't find it. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this um, 
very easily. First, he starts out with the um, horizontal line. We'll start out with the horizontal line. Three parts of the face. Remember, the face has three parts. One, two, three. And then he did the eyes for the line, which is this line right here, and a line for the mouth. And then what he did was he started indicating the um, the segments for the eyes with tiny vertical lines, as you can see. But he made the lines a little bit longer. I don't know if you can see that. See. So after that, once he did the, the, the center of the face, then he started rounding off, not rounding off, but, you know, doing the shapes like vertical lines, but kind of like slanted in order to do the face. And he did sort of like a diamond shape. That's what he did. And of course, all this is going to be actually molded. So that's the way he started. This would be the hairline right here. And then he did more shape on top of the head. So mainly, this is the process. That's how he did this woman right here, see? From the same process. And it came out pretty well. But I, I guess that would take a lot of practice to do that. Because I don't usually work with, you know, the center line that much. I should, you know. But uh, I usually start with the circle or ovals and stuff. But you could try to do this with uh, the same formula. You could, you know, start doing... I would start better with the vertical line. And then three parts of the face. And then I start indicating where the eyes are. The nose. The mouth. And then I would start rendering. I could, you know, try to do an oval. And then start rendering the face. And remember, you know, I keep repeating myself that you could change the method. You know, you could learn a method and you can change it a little bit. It really doesn't matter. As long as you get, you know, the proportions right. And then you start doing the, the hair. Like that. I don't know if you can see that that good. Yeah. Let me get it. Tighten in the pencil so you can see more the lines. So you could do it that way. Or you can simply do it the way he does it. Like I was showing you before. You do the um the you know horizontally better. And then do the vertical line. And then do another line for the eyes. And then do the uh, side of, of the face. So you could do it that way if you want. You don't really have to do more lines on top because you're, you're going to actually visualize the hair and the height of the head. As long as you have the hairline on top here, you're gonna actually visualize. If you're really good, you'll see, you'll visualize the hair of this woman and stuff. So after you do that, it's, you know, you just gotta, you know, give her character, you know, do the eyes, do the bridge of the nose. Always start off with the nose first. Yeah, the nose is more, yeah, definitely, whenever you look at a person and you're drawing a portrait of a person, it's better to start with the nose than the eyes. I'm going to show you a great, great uh, illustration that um, Abdon J. Romero did, which really spellbound me. I did, I actually take a lot of information down of all his techniques. But let me see if I can find the one he did um, about the face that he started with the nose. Let's see, it's around here someplace. Um, 
Uh, this is more like the body. I think it's um show you right now. Just to give you an idea of what I mean. Um, it was fascinating. Here it is right here. He on this uh segment that he did, this video that he did, he didn't really do the lines. He just started it was amazing. He started with the nose. And then he did the bridge of the nose. I actually numbered every uh, every step by step process that he did. And then from the bridge of the nose, he went down. He did the mouth, and then he started working with the uh, eyebrows. So that's the same thing when you're doing lines or ovals. Always start. You visualize you 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 you're the the center of the face. Because if you start drawing this eye first, and then or and then this ear, it's not going to work out. The basic elements when you're drawing portraits, it's the nose and the eyes. Picture this as a triangle. You can see like a triangle, see? A triangle from the edge of the eyes, the corner of the eyes, all the way to the nose, you see? I don't want to draw on the book, but you can see that I'm actually doing the triangle. Like an upside down triangle. Or a V shape, if you want to do a V shape. Yeah, V shape. Like a big V shape. And that is right there the target that's the target the most important target is the nose and the eyes so that's the same thing when you're doing any method whether you're using the angelumis oval or any type of technique always start off with the nose first and then the eyes then the, the brows and then you start you know you start working with the lips okay so let's go on with the book um Here's a three-quarter view. That's a very beautiful drawing of, of a woman, especially the highlights. I like the way he did the highlights here, see? And there's a lot of detail on this hair. This is something that I need a lot of practice with. Notice that he did highlights. Uh, let me, I don't know if you can see that. He did highlights on the hair. Very beautiful. And then at the same time, it's got a lot of grace. And of course, this came from a portrait. If you were to draw something like that from your head, it would probably take ages. But then again, you could, if you really put your mind to it. These are, you can tell that he drew these from portraits. And this is another technique over here. Uh, let's read this one. This one's you block, on, you block in the initial line, lines. Uh, lay down the center vertical. This time he's using the the center vertical line that bisects the face. And then a rough measurements of the overall head size. Keep it light. What you're what he's doing is that he does the vertical line, and then he starts doing the the shape of the face, and then he starts doing the rest, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So this is a different uh, segment that he did. Um, the other picture was he started with, uh, with the horizontal lines, but this one he started with the vertical lines. So he actually changes. And if you look at his channel, his videos, you, you're going to see he changes the, the technique in so many ways. Um, there's just no boundary when it comes to uh, learning a technique and methods and stuff. It's a beautiful drawing of the, I think it's a Swedish lady, I'm not really sure, but it's actually from a portrait. Right here he does a baby. Mark the guy lines, lightly add the keyframe lines to indicate the overall shape of the head. The vertical midpoint and the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So over here, he started doing the shape and then he did the lines to do the face. It's a beautiful drawing of a baby. This one is a block in the guy lines laid on. The structural foundation lines using... This doesn't really tell you that much, but you'll get the idea from when you read the first pa few pages. It's more like a three-quarter view. Excellent three-quarter view, the way he did that. Mm. 
using the mass method and the two plan uh, define the main horizontal lines for the eyes, nose, and mouth and chin. Lightly freehand the overall shape of the face. Use the uh, side lines from step one and to help you. It's a beautiful drawing of a little girl. Beautiful. This one, I think he started with a vertical line first and he did, let me read this. Um, block in the lines with the, no, 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 place the, indicate the placement of the nose, mouth, eyes, and other features. Vertical tape your reference photo. Yeah, it's the same thing. You start with the horizontal lines for the features and then the vertical line. And then you do the overall shape of the face. So this is something that reminds me, which I'm going to show you on the next book, which actually the, the other book explains more because it's actually, you can see the lines very clear on the other book, which I'm going to show you on the heads and faces. Um, what he did was he started doing a three quarter view, but of course you, you're going to, you're going to see less on this side and you're going to see more on this side. So let's concentrate with the, um, the line segments. So what he did was he started doing the shape of, of the head right here. So I'm going to do exactly the way he did it to see if I, uh, pretty much understand what he did here. Maybe just a little bit closer. So you gotta be very careful when you're doing this technique. It takes a lot. And then he did the, the jaw. I don't know if you can see that, the jaw right there. It's very light, so you can't see too much. So I'm gonna help you understand this. If you guys ever get this book, then you'll know what to do. Then he did a hint with the ears, and then he did the hair, and the other side of the hair. So that's what he did. He basically started with the horizontal line, vertical line. He made sure that it looked three-quarter view. You see less here, and you see more on this side of the head. And then basically he did, you know, the segments, which are those little tiny vertical lines for the eyes the nose now i don't know if i got the proportions right on this but i could always fix it and then he did the proportions for the mouth right here and then he started working with the features so that's what he actually did he started out with um horizontal lines three parts the line for the eye and the line for the mouth and then he started, you know, uh, since this is a three quarter view, so you got to have this a little bit less right here and over here a little bit more like, over, like up to here. And then he did the shape of the hair. So pretty much that's how he did this whole segment. But unfortunately, I wish he would have done this in ink better so you can see the detail. So he did that in pencil. You won't be able to see the process. You have to buy the book in order to see all those visible lines. And I was very disappointed when I saw that part. Um, uh, you know, I love him. I love him as an artist, but the problem is that he doesn't know how to do uh, how to draw a book well, well done. He should have made those process more darker, like what I'm doing right now. So, but it's a good book. You just gotta really, really focus on every detail that he does see over here you can't really see too much of the detail you can see it here but you can't see it too much over here and that's the sad part some of these um artists really need help in how to make some really great how to draw books that's a beautiful drawing of a little girl with a, her dog Looks like a pit bull or a boxer, I think. I'm not really sure. It's 
see over here you can see I don't know if you can see it that well but you can see the lines horizontal lines and then he does the overall shape of the face of the woman right here you can see so this is more like an advanced process and uh, pretty much what I just showed you right now on this one all right so let's go on with the next book because this is going to take a lot it's a lot to see and uh, I only have a time to show you like probably um, one or two more books after this so I'm, I'm giving you an idea of which books are really good for portrait drawing and this is one of them this is a good book the only problem is that you can't really see too much of the details um, how he started out with the um, because everything is made in pencil so you can't really see over here you can see a little bit and you can see more here then you can see a lot here a lot more on the other process that he did so so it's a very good book I had it for I would say um, seven years so far and uh, it's by it's, it's called drawing realistic pencil portraits step by step by Justin Mass look it up you can probably find this on eBay all right, so let's go on with the next book. See, this book I like a lot because everything is done in ink. So, especially the process. And you can see more. And I'm not going to go with the, with the first few pages because today we're focusing on heads. So, we're going to focus on heads. Like, I, I know I've done a video before on this, but the <clears throat> it wasn't perfect because of the camera angle. And uh, now that I have a phone holder, so I'll be able to show you a little bit more. This is actually the process how to do the eyes, even though I have another different process in doing eyes and lips. More like the classical way, 1930s style. You can tell by the drawing, it's very, very classical. There's another book I want to get, and I lost it. It's a red book. If anybody could tell me the name of that book, it's a, it's a cartooning book. They made one for the anatomy, and they made one for uh, cartooning. I think it was Jack Hammond. Let me write that down before I forget. Jack Hammond. I'm going to look that up. Not really sure, but if you guys know the name of the book and the name of the author, it was a red book. It was like from way, way back. And I lost it in New York, but I'm trying to find that book again. But um, hopefully I can find it. But it, it's um, a red book and it had a lot of cartooning on it. Like the whole cover was red. But if anybody knows that information, please let me know. So anyway, going back to this book, um, this is very, very classical. And I, I actually, it, I'm so um, obsessed with classical drawings, especially from the 1930s. Uh, especially, you, you have the, um, the profile, the eye, the nose. And these are the segments. You start out with a line. It tells you right here pretty much what you got to do, the line. And then you do the segment for the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the chin. And then you start doing the profile, the lips. And so graceful the way he did that. Look at that. So beautiful. Sort of like an Andrew Loomis style. Has a, sort of like an Andrew Loomis uh, profile style. Um, this one is pretty cool. This is very, very classical. Very Andrew Loomis, Norman Rockwell. You can tell the uh, segments for the eyes, the nose, the way he did that. Fantastic. And the lips. Beautiful lips. The way this guy draws is really good. But again, this artist is mostly sort of like classical uh, cartooning. But he draws very well for classical cartooning. It, it's, it doesn't look very, you know, uh, realistic like Andrew Loomis would do. It's more like classical cartooning, but you can use the method and you can start it out. Like for example, this one is pretty easy. And it's, oh, it's actually made with a few lines only. It's like it's, uh, show the minimal proportions guidelines. You will be able to start with a few lines as you become more comfortable with your drawing and observation skills. Even the two lines shown are helpful for determining the placement of the features. So let me see this, for example. Um, study the subject closely. No, 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 no. Okay, step two, make the facial features more 
uh, recognizable and uh, begin. So I think what he did was, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think he did it both ways. So let's try this out. Um, what he did was, he started off, and I'm going to show you pretty much what he did here. On step one, he did something like this. He started doing the sort of like an oval shape with just a few lines. This is going to be the side of the face. Then he did this line right here. Then this line right here. That's it, just a few lines. Then he indicated where those eyes are going to be at, like around there. He kind of like visualize it. Now I did the lines, but you know, in order to help me out to figure out where the eyes are going to be placed. So um, he did the eyebrows first, my greatest guess. And my greatest guess, he starts working with the eyes. Then my other greatest guess is he probably visualized the center line. <coughs> Excuse me. And, of course, he imagined there's a three-eye width, width here. There's a three-eye width here. And then he started making a sort of like an arrow, a V-shape for the nose. Kind of, you can tell right here, see? And then he did the corners of the nose. And then right here, between this line and uh, the overall here, which he actually finished it over here, he did the hint of the lips right there. So that's what he did when it came to this. Now, I don't think he did, um, like, you know, the lines. I don't think he did it that way. I think he started out pretty much like I was showing you. Oh, where's that pen again? Number five, was it? Let me see. Yeah, that's where it is right here. He started doing the, you know, the outline of the oval shape like that very simple and then he did the line for the eyebrows and then a line for the nose so that's what he means with a few lines and that's what he did here so if you can see i did the same thing so i kind of visualized with some fewer lines more i started visualizing the eyebrow here the eyebrow here and then the eye over here the other eye over here and then he indicated the nose, then the mouth right there, then the lips. And as you go along, you can see he started doing the shape of the face. So he started doing more cheekbones on the face. So let's look at this picture over here so you can, we can get an idea of what he did. Uh, he did the outline of the hair. And over here would be the hairline, where the hair actually folds down. And he did the outline, like that, like that, like that, then the ears, then the other ear. And of course, women's necks are slender, so he did, even though it looks a little bit thicker here. But <clears throat> if I were just to draw her, you know, front, you know, looking front view, which it is a front view, or maybe the neck just straight, then the, the neck would be from the length of the eyes, it would be a, like, a, like over here. But this drawing, as you can see, he did the neck going this way to the left side. So I'm actually going to leave it like this, better like this. And then in order to get the, um, the rest of the facial features, what he did was he did the cheek lines and he gave the body of the face more shape all the way down to the jaw, all the way down to the chin. And then the eyes, he started adding more details. The only thing with this drawing is he didn't do like the Loomis technique, uh, the bridge of the nose and the center of the nose. But if you want, you could, you know, do the uh, center of the nose and a hint of the eye. Uh, you know, the, uh, the bridge of the nose, like that, very lightly, that's it. Um, if, if you want it to look like very classical, if you want to, you know, make it look very classical, you could do it that way if you want. So going on to the next um, segment here, 
this is a three quarter view and it's the same thing um this time kind of like a adjusted mass uh, and what I like about this thing actually shows the penciling more see the process step by step it's a little bit light but you can see it more than Justin Mass's book uh, so um, just like uh, Justin Mass that he actually started out with the horizontal line so you can actually visualize this as a three three parts you see three parts this is going to be the nose line and this is going to be the chin line right here so so my greatest guess is uh he started doing you know the eye line here and then he did the shape the overall shape of the face right here the outline you know so you're what you're doing is the outline so the outline here and then you have as you can see right here uh, that's the uh, jaw line right there. So he breaks it right there, tapes her in all the way to the chin. Very simple. Then you do the mouth right here. And we're not going to do the vertical line, which I should. You know, I should do the vertical line. Maybe it'll be easier to understand. But let's try it this way to see how it works out. So he indicates where the, um, the eyes are. And he indicates where the nose are, just like you see over here. And if you think that the vertical line might help, then try it with the vertical line. So, so let's do this in ink so you get an idea of what he did here. We'll do the all the way like this and right here like this. Remember, you got to do three parts first and then you add the line for the eyes and the line for the mouth. And then, uh, of course... the overall outline of the face horizontal line three parts the shape of the face then you add the line for the eyes and the line for the mouth okay so we're going to do the same thing what he did now i noticed that it's not perfect because this eye is kind of big but i guess maybe on the when you do the process it comes more you know comes out more better so that's what he did here he started you know working out with the facial features my greatest guess he would probably start out with the eyebrow here, the other eyebrow here, or even maybe the eye first. He'll probably do the eye first. And then you can tell he did a straight line. You can tell the proportions here are not perfect, perfect, because that's not a perfect nose. Um, and also, again, this is like a cartoonish, cartoony way how to draw a classical face, which is not bad, you know? Um, but you, if you really want to perfect it better, you just got to use your head and, you know, you just got to bring out that nose a little out like that, make it look more realistic instead of cartoonish. And then you can uh, add the lips. And remember that this side of the face, you're going to see less and this side of the face, you're going to see more. So, you know, let's, we're going to add her lips. And then the other lip this way. So it looks pretty good. Um, the proportions came out pretty good. And the three-quarter view look, it looked okay. Because you can see less on this side and you see more on this side. Then, of course, right here, always remember that you're going to have to bring in the hairline right here. And then the hairline on the top of the head right here. Of course, the hair is going to come out this way. So you want to make sure you capture that. So this is a really effective way in doing uh, portrait drawing by using this technique. And you can make it look better than the cartoonish, because this is more like cartooning. But you can actually make it look way better instead of doing the cartooning style of the way this artist did it. And then you add more details. And I just love the, the classical way of the art, the way he does this. I'll be back, guys. I got to put the AC a little bit more. So it looks like it's pretty hot in here.
so you can see that came out pretty good. Oh, the page just moved. Okay. Now we're going to continue with the next page, which is really cool. This is sort of like um, a, a profile, but this is a very... It might work. You got to do it step by step, but I don't want, I don't want to get into this. This is going to take a long time to do. So this is part of the book. Whenever you, if you guys do get the book, you can practice this because I have my own way in doing uh, profiles, especially the noses here. So this one is a three quarter view. So we're going to try this one out. So to do a three quarter view, let me see something. Um, this is, you start out with the, um, <clears throat> the shape of the face, I would guess. And then you do the um, horizontal line for the eyebrow line and the nose line right there. And then my greatest guess, he started doing the features. But notice that he bring the, um, the eyebrow all the way to the nose. And then I think he did the eyes afterwards. So let's try it out that way to see if that works. And the line for the mouth right there. Now, this may not look, because I'm not used to doing this type of um, technique. <clears throat> then he did the line for the eyes right here. And this line right here, the eyes over here. So basically, he started off pretty much the shape first, something like that. And then he did the horizontal line for the eyebrow and a horizontal line for the nose. Then he started doing the eyebrow here, the nose, the eyes, and then the mouth. So that's what you see over here. Oops, I think I, no, I didn't. I thought I did, but. So it's the same process as this. All right, so let's go on to the next page, which this one, you can see more clear the lines. And uh, this one, actually you really gotta concentrate with this one. So we're gonna try this one out. We'll do it in the back here. So we can tell he starts out with the center vertical line, horizontal line for the eyes, horizontal line for the nose, and then the mouth and the chin. But notice that when he did the frame of the face, he did another line. As you can see, there's another line here. See, he said one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So he did an extra line to do that eyebrow line that you see here. So let's try it that way. It's going to be the eye line right here, nose line, mouth line, and the chin line. So what he did was he did another line on top. And of course, let's not forget the hairline on top. Then he did the frame of the head like that. I think I did that by mistake. Uh, erase that. Oh man, I messed this up. Oh, there you go. There you go. So that's what he did, and that's what I'm doing right now on this one. So to make this more easier to understand, we're going to do this in ink. 
like that, see? Then after that, he did the eyebrow line here, the hairline, and the frame of the face, like you see here. Then he did the outline of the shape of, you start, you know, visualizing the height of the, of the whole head. And then he started working with the inside of the shape of the head, which he started doing the jaw, something like that, the ears, something like that. Then he did the hairline, something like that. Now, I don't know if that came out good, but anyway, it's, I guess when I start adding the features, it might come out a little better. So this, this technique is a little bit complicating, especially if it comes, if it, if it has to do with the three quarter view, but the three quarter view is not easy to do. So what he did was, and like many artists would do, they start out with the nose just to get that out of the way, we'll do the nose. And then he did the planes of, of the face, like that, see? So pretty much, I did it a little bit different, but that's what he did over here, see? From this to this to this to this. And that's what I did. Just by working with the, you know, vertical line and horizontal line. So that worked out pretty well. Then after that, you start adding the features, adding more details. And like I said, it's more like a cartoonish way of drawing. So that's the same thing he did with the, the grand, the uh, old grandma here, grandmother. Uh, he, grew, he drew an elderly woman here with hair, uh, more like the classical style. He did the same process. Then he did the same process over here. And this one, believe it or not, even though some people might think it might be hard to do, but it's the same process over here. So let me, let me show you pretty much what he did here um, on this drawing right here. So let me just, that way I just put this over here so that way you can see more. So what he did was he started working with the center line again horizontal line, nose line, mouth line, the bottom lip here, and then right here would be the chin. So let's do this in ink. That way you can see it more clear. And we're gonna do it exactly like this, but maybe I might do some changes. I'm not really sure because I'm always changing a method. So after that, he started rounding off the shape of of the, you know, the head, like I'm doing now. See, this is the shape of the head. I'm gonna leave this in ink and then the rest I'm gonna do in pencil. Then he did, you know, the shape of the hair right here. As you can see, the shape of the hair right there. And he did the shape of the hair and then he worked his way down like that. Then, of course, it's gonna be the eye line right here. So he did another line here and kind of like tapered in to make that, you know, the corner um, planes of the eye. Because that's what, it, if you look at it really good, that's what it looks like. It's sort of like the, he tipped it in this way. Let me double check that. Yeah. It's like a speck there or something. I don't know what that is. But anyway, that's what he did. So he started doing the form of the edges of the eye, which are you know, other planes. And like always, the nose. Now, if you look at this nose, it's sort of like a triangle shape. So that exactly, he has sort of like a big nose. And, you know, uh, Indian people have like that big, big nose. And of course, the cheekbones a little bit wider. So we're going to actually try to capture this drawing. And of course, the nose is big, especially the nostrils in the bottom. And then it kind of like, if you look at it real good, it's kind of like pointing down the the tip of the nose. I 
And then he started, you know, uh, the eyes, he brings it in a little bit if you measure it, you know, one, one eye right here. So you do one eye and that would be the next eye over here. So you kind of like visualize uh, three eyes width. So when you look at the nose and the eyes, so there's the eye right here. So we're, we're going to try to make him look exactly the same like the drawing. And then after that, we'll start working, you know, with the, uh, the facial part of his eyebrows here. Um, the line that comes from the corner of the nose, which I keep forgetting the name of this, but anyway, if you guys can help me out. Then of course, the, the, um, there's more structure. The cheekbones come out a little bit, a little bit right here. And then the mouth. Um, comes out this way and it comes out this way these are like different types of shape lips that he did so we we want to capture you know his expression you know we have to capture his expression is important so we got the chin um, there's a little more shape underneath where the jaw area is And the, this method actually works for anything. If you want to draw women, draw any type of uh, character you want to do, including for com you know comics and stuff. So it actually works out. Except that you're just working with the center line, just like I started out. And this is almost kind of similar to how uh, Abden J. Romero and um, other artists like uh, Justin Mass actually start out almost every artist uh, actually used this technique by starting out with the center of the face just like I'm doing right now um, then the hair you know it kind of goes down this way of course there's not so many details over here but you see a lot of details on this picture right here so I'm not gonna go with all the details I'm just giving you an idea you know how the structure of the face so if you want to see the structure over here see like a bone shape here you see the bone shape here the cheekbone over here so let's try to do that you'll see the bone shape over here and then you start working this way this way and this way and then you could do the rest of the details you know his um is closing. I think this is sort of like an Indian that came from the north that they used to wear a lot of clothing. Uh, this is a great movie I saw the other day, Little Big Man. There's two great movies if you want to see, if you really, really have a lot of, um, you know, passion for Indian culture. Uh, you should see Dances with Wolves and Little Big Man. Those are two great movies that actually would focus more on the reality how Indians actually felt. And uh, it was a shame that what happened hundreds of years ago, the mistreatment of Indians. Um, so those are great, two great movies. Um, Dances of the Wolves and uh, Little Big Man. That Little Big Man is with um, Dustin Hoffman. He's a very good actor. In this movie, uh, Dustin Hoffman, he gets kidnapped as a child. Uh, not kidnapped, but he gets raised. Something happened to his family that they were uh, massacred by uh, other groups of Indians. And uh, because there were like several types of Indians that were probably against each other. So, you know, it was just chaos way, way back, um, especially in history. So um, in the movie, um, Little Big Man, um, Dustin Hoffman, as a child, gets raised by Indians. And um, it's very, it's kind of funny at the same time. And it's, it's very adventurous. It's got a great sense of humor. 
um, his sister also gets, you know, she gets um, uh, kidnapped by the Indians also. Um, but it's a very good movie. I, you know, I really recommend it. It's called Little Big Man with Dustin Hoffman. And I know everyone is familiar with uh, Dances with Wolves. That's a beautiful movie. That's a very beautiful movie. I love that movie. And uh, The Last of the Mohicans were, was a good movie. I really enjoyed The Last of the Mohicans. Um, the Last of the Mohicans, it's the only thing about that movie is that the movie is a little bit too... Um, it's a lot of violence. But it's basically pretty much how the Europeans started invading and manipulating other Indians to attack the good Indians and all that. So it's a very, very good movie. It's, it's all about history, so you should actually watch that movie. Actually, three movies. The Last of the Mohicans and watch, um, how do you call it? Um, Dances with Wolves and the 1970s uh, Little Big Man. And the reason why they called him Little Big Man in the movie is because the chief Indian saw um, that Dustin Hoffman, when he was little, he saw, you know, he was courageous. And it all started out that he actually uh, fought a big kid, you know, an Indian kid, and he fought him back. And then the chief Indian called him Little Big Man. So really, you guys got to see that movie. It's really good. So anyway, um, going back to the book. This is the same process. It's the same technique that I was showing you before. Uh, now, this is more like a realistic faces, but pretty much I've shown you this many times, the Andrew Loomis method. So it shows you pretty much... Um, the grid, not the grid, actually the planes. See, the planes of the face, that's all, you know, very important. So let's go with this last one because I'm running out of uh, storage here and the phone is acting kind of funny on me. So I want to make sure that this actually downloads also. So you can see the planes, you see what you see here on this picture over here, you're seeing it right here, the planes, you see? See the planes? And those planes actually help you form the toning of the face. You see a lot of toning here, underneath where the chin is, toning where the cheekbones are, a little bit highlights, and over here. Of course, you, you can tell the, the, the light reflection is coming from this side. So this side of the face is gonna be a little bit darker over here, so. Then this over here will show you some eyes how to draw eyes. Again, it's actually as a fear, a circle, and you do the V shape, do the iris of the eye, and then you start doing all the details of the eyes. And here we have the nose, how to tone the nose, rendering the nose, the ears again, the lips, this is another way how to do the lips. You can tell there's direction over here, one, two, three, on the lips right here. How to do a smile, the profile lip. So the way I would probably do lips, which I'm gonna show you right now, it's, um, I'm gonna do it, um, actually, you know what, I think on the next video I'll do this because I wanna see if this actually downloads. And you gotta excuse me guys because I'm starting out to do better videos now, and I wanna make sure that everything downloads good. Okay, good luck guys, and keep drawing. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe because I'm gonna be doing more videos, okay?